Travel along the busy industrial corridor of the Mississippi can be extremely hazardous. In fact, 30 years ago today, it was fatal to 78 passengers trapped on a ferry traveling from Destrehan to Luling. It was the worst ferry disaster ever recorded in U.S. history. Headlights pierced the darkness as passengers, mainly chemical plant and construction workers, waited for the Luling Destrehan ferry to board this cool October morning. The ferry, the George Prince, would take on a full load of more than 90 people and several dozen vehicles. As it left the dock shortly after 6 a.m., it was only minutes away from its collision with the Norwegian tanker Frosta, which at 664 feet in length dwarfed the 120-foot commuter ship. About midway during the, the passage from Destrehan to Luling, Luling uh, the tanker, the, the Frosta, was coming upstream and Horn, uh, you know, it was, whist it was whistling, doing like a lot of blasts, three or, three or four blasts, whistle blasts, that's what was reported. And the, the ferry boat, uh, the George Prince, seemed oblivious to, to all the signs and all the, uh, you know, all the, the warning signals that, that the Frosta was giving. Many of the passengers on board the George Prince heard the warning sounds from the Frosta and thought that surely the pilot of the ferry would hear the sounds too and therefore avoid the ship. When it didn't, the Frosta hit the George Prince dead on, creating an eight-foot gash. The force of the tanker overturned the George Prince, spilling cars and people into the water as the bottoms of both ships collided. 78 people died, 18 survived. Hanville High School teacher Roy Anderson was drawn to the historic disaster as its 30th anniversary approached. His 22-minute documentary retells the story of the tragedy he believes many have since forgotten. If it would have happened like in New York City, yeah, I think it would, you know, I think there were, it would have been commemorated a little bit better. But here it's just kind of weird that, you know, people have seemed to have forgotten about it, you know. It's just, it's just puzzling. So I just wanted to, to, you know, help the best I could as a journalist and a filmmaker to, you know, educate people on this disaster. It's, it's historic. Anderson's story includes the harrowing account of survival from Charles Shadlin, who was trapped in his truck when the George Prince went down, escaping only when the water pressure in the river shattered the windows of the vehicle. As I was coming up, I felt a hand come in my hand, but I, I couldn't feel a body attached to it. And eventually I just let it go because I still didn't feel a uh, body attached to it. By then, I was starting to suck in some water because I couldn't hold my breath anymore. And I could feel diesel fuel and water going down my throat. I didn't take big gulps, I took very, very small sips. And then all of a sudden I came up and my head was above water. You know, obviously as we flew in, we, we could see all the activity and we realized how bad it was going to be. At the time of the accident, Ron Thompson was an admiralty lawyer for the State Department of Transportation. He arrived at the scene as recovery efforts were underway. At that time I had not been in a war zone, but it was very similar to that. It was just a gigantic, catastrophic um, sadness of everything because the, um, the families for the folks that were uh, riding the ferry were um, gathered on the banks and there was a, 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 a hush, if you will, and an occasional cry out whenever somebody was recognized, but the, the folks were doing a good job and they were bringing in the um, uh, recovered bodies um, away from the crowd. The task of riding the ferry, recovering victims and vehicles was painstaking and the evidence of the aftermath grim. Scratch marks were found inside many of the cars and trucks where passengers tried vainly to escape. Iris and Kenneth Sanji were parents of seven children. One, Richard, a plant worker, was trapped in the passenger waiting room. Knocked unconscious, he drowned. It never dawned on me that uh, my son would have been on that ferry because at that time, because normally he went to work at a, a, an earlier hour. 
Iris, how did you feel, I mean, when you heard that it wasn't a barge, it wasn't another ferry, but it was a ship that hit the ferry? I just couldn't believe it, that a ship could have hit a ferry and such tragedy would occur to, to have so many killed, 78 of them killed, and we crossed the ferry. We would cross it all the time. Although the ferry had the right of way, a half-empty bottle of whiskey was later found in the pilot house. An autopsy showed pilot Jean Aletta with a blood alcohol level of .09, just shy of the legal limit. Weather conditions at the time of the accident showed the air was clear and crisp without fog, haze, or other impairments to visibility. Those experienced with the river were aware of the danger of heavy industrial traffic, yet the prospect of a tragedy that would take so many lives was a fear to some, but not all. I used to uh, think people were foolish to be afraid of riding on a ferry. It had a lot of people wouldn't, didn't want to r cross the river on a ferry. And I always thought they were, they were foolish until this thing happened. And it took me years before I was ever, ever able to get on a ferry again. Yes, uh, Mississippi River is a very dangerous place, and the, um, um, that particular corridor through there, that particular milepost on the um, river is, is very heavily traveled, though. There's a lot of plants up and down the river, and you know, they come all the way up to Baton Rouge, so it's a very high-traffic high area, high-volume traffic. Today, the Luling Destrahan Ferry Landing is barely visible, overgrown with weeds with no sign of what happened here 30 years ago. The Luling Destrahan Hale Boggs Bridge, barely a mile away and already under construction when the disaster occurred, was opened in 1983, giving commuters a new and safer route between the two banks. There is a monument to the victims in St. John Parish and a movement to get another marker in St. Charles Parish. While some fear memories of the tragedy are fading as the years go by, others, like the Sanjis, say they can never forget. With all the time passing, do you worry that your son's memory will be forgotten? No, because we talk about him, you know, we talk about him all the time and uh, someone with his son and, and, and the, the uh, great-grandchildren that we have, they're, uh, they're always coming. And the upstairs is wide open, and when they come, they are all upstairs. So that keeps his memory oh, yeah. alive? Oh, very much so, yes. And special thanks to all of those who helped us tell this story, particularly filmmaker Royd Anderson and photographer Grace Lelou. The families of the Survivors. victims were awarded $15 million in damages in the wake of the accident. The collision did lead to regulatory reforms. Ship pilots are now subject to random drug and alcohol testing.